Yeah, I basically uh, graduated. And then it was kind of like you reach this point where you don't know if you should kind of continue interning or um, go to master's or try something else. And then I just kind of reached like a, a point where I had to decide and I just took the leap and started my company. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I wanted to see what happens in the end. Okay, I'm gonna put this whole collection. How do I sell it? How do I interact with people? How do I build trust with boutiques who have no idea who I am or where I come from or what this is? Like, how do I get people to believe in this? Every interaction you have with someone, every piece of advice someone tells you, every like, um, every fight you have with a supplier, every like person who turns you down, like you, you always learn how to deal with people, how to negotiate, how to compromise, how to sell people your your vision. In the real world, that's how it is. Like you know, like you have seasons, and if you don't have a collection by Fashion Week, you're you're just you're done for the season. It's really easy to get lost, you know, like you can think like you want, you can do it by yourself. But when you actually are by yourself with a blank canvas and you have to do everything from scratch, keep that guidance in your, in your, in your mind and take, even though you might not be happy with the criticism, always be aware of it. That way, when you're like on your own, you kind of know where your, what your weakness you. is and you're mm -hmm. always keeping an eye on it and you're always trying to improve it. It's my first collection and they were asking like, um, where are your showrooms? I'm like, none. I'm like, Who are your stockists? I'm like, none yet. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, they're never going to accept me. But I wrote them like, I told them like, it's my first season. I'm trying to reach the European market and, and trying to show my stuff. And so they, and I think a lot of designers start that way.